I would observe her as a quiet, you know, very humble, classy woman. I have uh, great memories of her as a, as a young person, but I will admit, and I speak for my, my, uh, my, my brothers and my sister, that none of us really knew the true greatness of this woman. Meet a Vo Warwick Fuller, David Fuller's grandmother. As he puts it, she was a game changer. I could go on and on uh, about what she achieved at an early age and the groundbreaking things she, she did and the people she met and her experiences. Meet of a Warwick Fuller was born in 1877 in Philadelphia. Um, she came from a middle class uh, African American family and she really showed an early interest in art and she really loved sculpting. She had this very kind of quiet determination throughout her life. A lot of people who knew her have said how she didn't really boast too much. She was very this kind of quiet person, yet even through all the struggles and the kind of expectations she was supposed to have being a woman, an African-American woman, she really stayed focused to what she loved. Rachel Passanante is the collections manager at the Danforth Art Museum, which has its very own exhibit featuring Mita Vo Warwick Fuller's work. Rachel says that the support Mita had from her family to pursue her interest in art was unique at a time when women were often expected to focus themselves on caring for a husband and family. Mita went on to study at the Philadelphia Museum of Industrial Art, as well as various schools and institutions in Paris, where she met the famous French sculptor Rodin. But despite her impressive studies and experiences, Mita was met with challenges when she returned to Philadelphia a few years later. She struggled for a number of years trying to build up her art career. Um, being a woman, she wasn't as accepted in a number of galleries. And she also, being African-American, had struggles trying to get representation in the U.S. But Rachel says Mita's determination paid off. When in 1905, she was commissioned to produce several pieces for an exhibition at the Jamestown Tercentennial. She won a gold medal for her, um, for her work, um, which really kind of put her on the map. And then she, after a couple years after that, she still couldn't quite get her career off the ground. Um, her mother was really pushing her to get married, which was typical at the time again. And she met her future husband, Dr. Solomon Fuller, here in uh, Massachusetts when she was taking a, a break. In 1909, Mita and Solomon married and moved into a house they built right here in Framingham, the very same house their grandson, David Fuller, came to know well. Well, I didn't realize that she did her work there, upstairs, because it was before my time. That's what my three, three of my brothers and I, that was our bedroom up there. My father made it into two different bedrooms. We were playing, you know, house hockey and running around crazy <laughs> like kids. The Danforth Art Museum has a replica of that space, the attic of the Fuller's home where Mita continued sculpting, even as she took care of her husband and his career, along with her three children. Back in the turn of the century, you know, during that time, a woman's role was to be, you know, a step back. And because uh, my grandmother wasn't hearing that, she was an innovator and a visionary. So she just went ahead with her work. David admits he wasn't able to fully comprehend the true gravity of his grandmother's work until he got older, when he could better understand the influence of her accomplishments like a number of her pieces often associated with the Harlem Renaissance, a golden age for African-American culture in the early 20th century. She never lived in New York City, but she is considered one of the kind of preeminent women's sculptures of the Harlem Renaissance. And this is mostly due to her connection with W.E.B. Du Bois. Danforth has a few pieces of Mita's work directly related to that period, such as a sculpture entitled Water Boy. There's also her portrait bust entitled Negro is Poet, which is believed to be the bust of Maxwell Nisi Hayson, a Harlem Renaissance writer. They're just some of the many works on display here. According to Rachel, these pieces of art are getting the word on Mita out. We have one of her works that just went to New York City um, to go to the Met, and then I'll be going to the Smithsonian after that. Um, we had the same work, um, Ethiopia Awakening, uh, went to the Venice Biennale, which is a big art event over in Italy every two years. Um, so she went there last year. So it's been great to also get the word out about her through these loans. It lets people know um, that of who she is. Hopefully people can get more interest of her. Mita's grandson David says within the past dozen or so years, 
more and more accolades have been granted in honor of his grandmother and his grandfather, Dr. Solomon Fuller. My grandfather, the first black psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller, as you know, these are two unbelievably great and talented for the nation that for the African American uh, community uh, made unbelievable changes. Now that I'm older and uh, able to really digest the magnitude of both of my grandparents, every day I can smile at that and be proud. And it's also a source of communication with my own children and grandchildren about the need for them to realize that although the color of their skin uh, in some areas, even now, could be an obstacle. They should never make an excuse for being productive, positive, and accomplished because there's a role model or two that uh, went through so many barriers. They overcame those and achieved greatness.